today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I want Isaiah to stop treating me like I'm not worth anything. And I would like for him to just see me as his wife and know that I am his teammate and not just some child or somebody he met on the street. My wife is very unappreciative of me and sometimes I just, I feel like I'm, I'm an ATM and the only reason why I'm there is to be that ATM. If he doesn't show me more respect, I'm out the door and I just take my kids and this buys Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Kimberly Jackson and Isaiah Harris. Ms. Jackson and Mr. Harris, you have been married for 13 years and you have two children together. You don't want to be married anymore or you don't know what to do about the mess that you're in, and it is, in fact, quite a mess. Ms. Jackson, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why are we here today in divorce court? Your Honor, we're here today because I really would like to save my marriage, but... He doesn't respect me. He doesn't defend me. He treats me like somebody that he met off the street instead of his wife. He treats me like a child instead of his wife. He has cheated on me and has lied to me about it. Now, I have done my share of dirt, mm -hmm. but I would really like to save my marriage today if it's possible. Now, when you say he cheated on you, do you know that for a fact? And if so, how did you find out? Back when I was pregnant with my second child. He, we got into an argument at one of my family members' house. We got into an argument. He left the house and he was supposed to be at work that night. Mm -hmm. And then I would say maybe about a couple of hours later or so, I get a text message from my best friend at the time telling me she was in a hotel with my husband and that they had slept together. So naturally, when he got home, my first instinct was to punch him in the face. But, but, but we didn't go there, did we? No, you? we didn't go there. There you go. I handled it like a lady. Well, kind of yelling and screaming like a lady, but I handled it like a lady. <laughs> I asked him, is this true? Why do you, why are you in a hotel with my friend? Did you sleep with her? He tells me no. He was in a hotel with her, but he didn't sleep with her, which didn't make no sense to me, but that's the story that he's telling. Well, Mr. Let's, let's, let's ask Mr. Harris. He can tell his own story. Why don't you tell me what happened with the friend? First of all, Your Honor, um, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Okay. <laughs> that's first of all. Okay, thank you, Bill. Um, but what happened was, is, as she said, we did have a, we had an argument. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, the way that, it, way that it happened is we were, it was my day off. And I don't often get days off. I was trying to spend a day off with my wife. Her family called her, and she basically put that family before me and be basically before our child as well, because I was just trying to spend some time with my family. So yeah. they give you the right to hang go on, with hang, hey, 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 hey. So I went to leave the house. If, if I'm upset, or if I'm angry, uh, instead of arguing, I'm not really not really a person that's gonna stand there and argue with you. I'd rather get, you know, just walk off and leave, cool off and come back. That's exactly what I was going to do. I did end up um, getting in contact with her best friend. We did not have uh, any type of sexual relation, no. But what did we, the two of you do? Did you hook up? Did you have you, dinner? What, what we, happened? We did, um, we ended up hooking up and uh, we went to a hotel that did happen. Now, what was the purpose of hooking up and going to a hotel if it wasn't to have sex? It, it started out that way, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but there was a couple reasons why it didn't happen. One, my conscience didn't let it happen. The second reason is that she brought a one-year-old and a four-year-old to the hotel with us. <laughs> so I was like, nah, it's, it, it just didn't feel right. And that's one of the reasons why it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever cheated on Mrs. Jackson? No. So that is the only time you almost cheated on her, but because she brought her kids <laughs> with her, <laughs> you, you didn't go through with it. Yes, that's, that's correct. Is, is that it? Yes. Have you ever known Mrs. Jackson to cheat on you? Yes, she has. Why don't you tell me about that? <laughs> All right, so at that particular time, I was um, a recording artist. Um, I did a show in West Palm Beach. She came to the show. So um, I was on the stage doing my show, doing everything. After I finished the show, one of the radio DJs walked up and gave me a hug. 
My wife is in the back. This is a female. My wife is in the, in the crowd screaming and hollering and all of this, you know, cursing. And I'm sure I'm not the only person that heard her. Um, now, fast forward about a month, I was invited to do another show in Atlanta. My wife wanted to come with me. Now, she had just acted, you know, a fool at another show. There's no way I was going to bring her to a, a different show. She gets upset and angry. I find out that she, you know, she slept with my best friend. Ms. Jackson, did you sleep with his best friend? Yes, I did. And your reasoning behind that was? Let me just say, I'm not proud of what I did. I own up to what I did. It is what it is. I can't change it. Now, I'm not saying it didn't hurt him, but I can't change it. The show that he's talking about was on my birthday. He did the show on my birthday. I begged and pleaded him to take me with him. That's irrelevant. You slept with his best friend. There's, 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 there's no... Didn't... Let's not get into that. Oh. You still think he's cheated on you beyond oh. that. Oh. You have evidence where you found panties in his yes. car. Tell me about that. Okay, I'm looking inside the car. We're getting ready to go on to a restaurant. You know the driver's the passenger side door where you reach your hand in mm -hmm. to go get something? I pull out some panties. My hers. first reaction, I threw the panties out of my hand because I don't know if they were nasty or whatever. Whose who panties were? Yes. So I confront him about the panties. He's giving me this stupid look. I say, where did these panties come from? <laughs> like, he don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so... Mr. Harris, where did the panties come from? They were hers. Look, look, look. You don't think she knows her own panties? Look at me. Uh, they were hers. There's, there's no woman being how in did, my car. How did her panties get in the car then? She leaves everything in my car. Oh my God. I got, I have well, so makeup, she just, she's in there in the car, shoes. she just wiggles out her panties and throws them in yeah. the, it, there, in the, side, oh of the side of the door? There have been times that she has done that. No, I mean, no, I have a whole no, wardrobe no. in my car. Shoes, no. clothes. No, no, Ms. no. Ms. Jackson, yes. do you have any other no. stories Look of cheating? Look at me. I'm a size, size zero. These panties look like they was plus size. How they gonna fit me? Okay. I think we've got a good picture of, of, of the fidelity issue. So let's move on to the other concerns that you have. And Ms. Jackson, I know that you don't believe that he supports you in what you do. So I'm gonna ask you to tell me about that. Oh, there are your wigs. What? Does it annoy you she buys your, so many wigs? Your Honor, the problem is with my wife once she gets something new, the old stuff goes out of the door. Do you think that's a good use of your money? There are your two people here, you got two kids. Are you, are you stacked that deep that you can waste money on a whole lot of hair? So, Ms. Ms. Jackson, you say you had aspirations to become a model but he was less than supportive about that. Why don't you tell me what went on? Okay, they called me to be a model, an agency. So I'm all excited about it. I'm like, okay, they want me to be a model. He looks at me and tells me, why would they want you? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not ugly. I just don't think you got what it takes to be a model. Why would you say that to me? Did you say that to him? I've never told her anything <sighs> of that nature. In fact, when she went to, to do this modeling, um, situation. I was the person that took her there. I'm the person that made sure that she looked good when she was going there. So how can I not support something when I'm doing everything that's necessary? So you say she's just made that up out of whole cloth, that that's she good. just that make telling sense. me a story yes. to make you look bad. Yeah. Wow. In a sense. Okay. In a sense. Yeah. I've, I've never not supported anything that she's done. But at the same time, my wife does start a lot of things and she doesn't finish them. So if she gets ready to go and, and do something different, then of course I'm going well, to. What kind of things has he started and not finished? Well, m my wife has, you know, she's, she was going to be a nurse. She started that. She didn't finish it. She was going to do medical coding and billing. She Ooh. started that. She didn't finish that. She was doing wow. some other classes. She she hasn't she has no problem starting something. Something, but can't finish it. Exactly. Can, 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 so do you have no follow through? Not true. The seeing the my, uh, nursing thing he was talking about, we went through the classes. I completed the classes, mm -hmm. but the state test had to be paid for. I told him how much the state test was and would he pay for it. Why should I pay that for you? What you gonna do for me? I'd been out there at any job I could get and get my little nickels and dime together and pay for my own <laughs> test. That's what I would do. <laughs> what about 
the wigs. You said he didn't support you with respect to some wigs. What's that all about? The respect and the wig things in general. He can disrespect me by anything. It don't even have to be wigs, Your Honor. Oh, there are your wigs. Yes. Does it annoy you she buys yeah. so many wigs? Your Honor, the problem is with my wife, once she gets something new, the old stuff goes out of the door. I so, let's say I've just, like, I, I, I could spend, see the, the wig at the far left? Yeah. I'll spend $70 on that wig, right? Right. The next two days, she don't like that wig no more. I get the second wig, and the first wig has went out of the door. So that's a lot of money getting recycled exactly. through hair. I don't, I don't have a problem, you know, buying food, but at least eat what we just bought. Right. I that's got my you. problem. I got you. Do you think that's a good right. use of your money? There, you're two people here. You got two kids. Are you, are you stacked that deep that you can waste money on a whole lot of hair? Okay. With as far as the kids go, I make sure my kids taken care of before I buy anything. So their That's college funds one. are fully funded. They have food in their stomach, clothes on their back. They taken care of. Let, let me tell you something. Putting mm. food in their stomach and clothes on their back, that's not, that's not how you take care of children. You take care of children by having enough money to do extracurricular activities, to know what they do well and don't do well, to get them active, to get them passionate, to pay for college. That's what that is. It's not the Masons. It's all that other stuff you get them to do that keeps them out of trouble. If they're playing football, they don't run, out, run around on the street and they make you pay for everything now. Ain't nothing free. And another thing, Your Honor. Oh, no, not oh, another thing. No, I'm all done. My son passed away two days after he was born. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I'll tell him, oh, I'm so sad about it and stuff like that. And he'll tell me, you should get over it. People die every day. Mr. Harris, is that accurate? Do you believe Isaiah slept with Kimberly's friend or just hooked up with her? Tell us what you think at facebook.com slash divorce court. Divorce court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. So what's your co primary con concern with her, Mr. Harris? Um, my primary concern with my wife is, um, of course, she do I don't feel like she appreciates the things that I do. Well, what do you do that she fails to appreciate? Just working, making sure everything is taken care of. I feel like she takes those things for granted. Do you have a job? No, I don't. I had a job, Your Honor, but I have sickle cell anemia. I got very, very sick. And it was his idea for me to leave the job because I couldn't even walk. He tells me, you can leave the job. I'll make sure everything is taken care of. I couldn't even walk. I couldn't do anything at the time when I was sick. Okay, I got so, that. How okay. is she failing to appreciate what you do? Doesn't she cook and clean and all that? Or all right. doesn't she? I, I call it her four for five rule. Let's say she wants me to do five things for her. Let's say she wants me to get her hair done, get her nails done, buy her outfit, buy her dinner, and buy something for the dog, buy a bed for the dog. If I miss one of those things, I'm the worst person in the world. Don't touch me, don't okay. talk to me, don't come near me. I asked you for this and you didn't do it. You're horrible. Do you do that? Do you not appreciate what he does do for you? And, and look I past appreciate me? everything he do for me. That what he's true. saying when I say don't touch me, don't come near me, if somebody comes home after work, which I can understand, he works hard and stuff like that. He takes everything out on me. He can be on the computer typing and I would say something to him and I say, did you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. Why you gotta keep saying it? I heard you. And if the spoon, if he can't see his face inside the spoon, it ain't clean enough. So if you wanna talk to me like that, of course I'ma tell you don't come near me. Mm -hmm. Ms. Jackson, you also talk about support in a very meaningful way. You said you had the loss of a child, and you think that your husband isn't supportive in your grief process. Why don't you explain that to me? Well, I was 18 years old, and my son passed away two days after he was born. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. He passed away two days after he was born, and 
That happened long before I even met him. Mm -hmm. And he was born on September 11th. So the next year, I was trying to grieve what should have been his first birthday. And all those people died on his birthday. Mm -hmm. So it's very depressing to me. And now, today, even then on that day, I try not to watch the news because mm -hmm. I don't want to hear about that day. Right. And I'll tell him, oh, I'm so sad about it and stuff like that. And he'll tell me, you should get over it. People die every day. Mr. Harris, is that accurate? I don't look at death the way that my wife does. I honestly think that when a baby is born, that's a time that we should mourn. And when a death happens, that's the time that we actually should be happy. You can so leave all that it's medical, little, metaphysical so it's, nonsense alone. Let me tell you something about being a human being. If you're married to a human being, what you have to do is deal with that human being's feelings. So whatever your philosophy is, is, is irrelevant to her feelings. And she has a right to her feelings. You married her. You said you loved her and you were going to honor her and you are going to care for her. One day a year, she needs you to be a man and, and, and let her be sad on your shoulder and you can't show up and do that. No, no kind of met metaphysical theory makes that okay. That just makes you tired. That makes you a silly little person who doesn't have enough ability to look at somebody else's needs and fill them simply because you don't share them. That's enough of that. What do you think's creating the tension in Kim and Isaiah's 13-year marriage? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I think you guys forgot the whole point of getting married to begin with. And I think you guys have gotten so focused on getting what you want that you don't do anything to feed the marriage. I think Mrs. Jackson does the stuff with the hair and all that nonsense and flitting from one job to another and this and that, because you're not nice. I don't think you're kind to her. I think she's got a big void in there somewhere because you come over here with this analytical nonsense and it's, it, it, it's so steely and cold and unkind and talking about because you don't believe death is one thing that you will not support her in her grief of a child and all that. That's just, that's, I mean, that's scorpion-like. You know what I mean? It's, it's hard, it's unfeeling. And I think when you come across as a hard, unfeeling person, your wife finds ways just to, ah, ah. When's the last time you showed her you loved her? Sure. You know, the pay and the bills thing, you, you do that, and then she cooks and she cleans, and she does that, but you got to love each other in some way, shape, or form. Paying bills is not love. <laughs> I think she's a little... Uh, ditzy over there. I get that part. I just a little silly with those wigs and can't get anything done. If I'd gone through some whole CNA program, I would have flipped burgers until I got that test money. They couldn't have stopped me. You know what I mean? It, you know, you say you got everything your kids need. You don't have that CNA degree that your kids need you to have. So you can have some money for them later. You two need to sit down. You need to go to a marriage counselor and we focus on what the purpose of marriage is. Not simply to fulfill your needs, but it's to fulfill your, the needs of your partner in a way that makes the entire enterprise a greater and better thing. Good luck to you both. This matter is adjourned. The judge told me that I needed to be more considerate to my wife, and I think I just need to remember that my feelings aren't the only feelings that matter. I think that we can really save our marriage if we really put the effort to, and I don't want to flush 14 years down the drain. It's always hope for somebody, and I think it's hope for us.